Good morning. Okay. Welcome back, one and all. Good morning. Ah, oh, here he is. Now, this is the man who's just been playing in the over 80s golf tournament for the Church of England. I know that you qualified for the over 80s, Chris, but never mind. <laughs> I wore a disguise. <laughs> But, but you were victorious. Possible. Were you victorious? Well, we did win a... We, yeah, the Salisbury Diocese team did win a cup. Ooh. Marvellous. You did it for the honour of the diocese. That's so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anybody who understands golf probably knows that this was a combined total of the 80s, because a combined total of handicaps or something, wasn't it, Chris? Well, I think you already know more than me, because the world <laughs> of how they work out the results on this golf day is a mystery. Ah, that's because it's 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 one of the glory. What what do we say? You know, the the sacred mysteries of the Church of England. You say they make it up as they go along, don't they? Because they <laughs> want was, everyone. There was, to... a, there was another cup awarded to Scotland. What? So the diocese, the, the diocese they... of Salisbury and Scotland. So so we are like a whole nation now. <laughs> that yeah. sounds brilliant, doesn't it? <laughs> so where was this golf tournament played, Chris? Can I ask? Um, Tam near Tamworth. Oh yes, oh lovely. The middle of England somewhere. Yeah. So were you so playing it... with um Paul Taylor? Uh, Paul Taylor was there. Yes, he, he represents Birmingham now. Oh, does he? Yeah, he oh, right. does because he's does. licensed to Birmingham. Although he lives in Worcester Diocese, of course. Yeah, but his license is Birmingham. Yeah. Wow. So, so you were playing. You were playing not. As I misunderstood earlier, uh, in an over 80s competition. Uh, the, the trophy we won was for the combined handy. I think the combined handicap of over 81 that's point something. I don't know how they work it out. It, the guy in what charge, is who is Scottish, awarded himself the Scottish Cup. Oh, good. As one would expect. And but it's but the Lord, the, the, the Lord will out, see through. Do that cheap, cheap, cheap trick, uh, Chris. You know, you won't, you won't allow it to stand, you know. Um, but the other thing I did find out is the Clergy Rider Cup, which was Great Britain and Northern Ireland versus Amer clergy versus American clergy. Yeah. Um, two weeks ago, won the Rider Cup or the, the Clergy Rider Cup in Northern Ireland. So they had this big gold cup thing on display to say we've won something. Oh dear! It's getting more and more complicated by the second, Chris. Yeah. However, good. it's good you're back, and uh, Debs and I um, dutifully looked after Rev Chat last week, and I think I think Bishop uh, the Bishop Bishop Karen appreciated because we were very succinct and to we the point. We were very succinct. We, yeah. Yeah. We go. Yeah. yeah. Although I did. I mean, I I'm did... sacked. No, 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 definitely not. No, no. no but, um, not sacked. We were succinct because I haven't got a proper license. Um, so I've only got so long on Zoom. So we had to make sure. We were also very busy, weren't we, David? So I trust we you're talking we were... about your Zoom license and not your priestly license. Oh, no, yes, I am talking about the Zoom license. Oh, and I'm still Pete Stone, sorry. Um Well, there was a few years ago where Joe almost had no license because she she overlooked renewing her um safeguarding or dbs application and yeah. uh she got a letter to say unless you've done it by you know, two o'clock this afternoon you'll be suspended from duty so we were we were almost in trouble there so <laughs> <laughs> right well it's good to be back it's good to see you all and um we've got some reading from paul's second attempt to write to the people in corinth at some point haven't we chris you're going to read it for us Oh, good. I shall read it. Let's just have our pause, and then we shall read. So our reading is from the second letter of Corinthians. Now, as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. 
I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable, according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. But thanks be to God who put in the heart of Titus the same eagerness for you that I myself have. For he not only accepted our appeal, but since he is more eager than ever, he is going to you of his own accord. With him we are sending the brother who is famous among all the churches for his proclaiming the good news. And not only that, but he has also been appointed by the churches to travel with us while we are administering this generous undertaking for the glory of the Lord himself and to show our goodwill. We intend that no one should blame us about this generous gift that we are administering, for we intend to do what is right, not only in the Lord's sight, but also in the sight of others. And with them we are sending our brother, whom we have often tested and found eager in many matters. But who is now more eager than ever because of his great confidence in you? As for Titus, he is my partner and co-worker in your service. As for your brothers, they are messengers of the churches, the glory of Christ. Therefore, openly before the churches, show them the proof of your love and of our reason for boasting about you. There. Do we all excel in everything? You obviously did on the golf course, Chris, so well done. <laughs> you didn't see my score sheet. <laughs> but as long as you play to the best of your ability, your God-given ability, and he does have a good a good sense of humour, does the Lord, uh, you did well. So there we are. I, I, I've always liked Paul's letters to the Corinthians, and I don't know particularly why. Uh, I should like them more than others because you know I like uh, many of us like Ephesians and Philippians and bits and pieces, but the letters of Corinthians seems to have uh, to me it, it seems to have some kind of um, genuine love for the people that he's writing to. Mm -hmm. And by the time he gets this second letter, he, he must be starting to get a little bit tired of. It. He's been out, he's seen them, he's written to them once, then he's had another go, and they've written back, and he's written to them, but he never stops loving them, does he? I think no, that I think that thing about having eagerness, you know, even if you don't feel that you've, uh, I think if you've got the will or you, you the desire, the wish to serve, that's the beginning of it. I think that's that's a really gentle approach, actually, isn't it? Because um, mm -hmm. obviously he then goes on and says, you know, you've got to get on and do things, but um, sometimes people don't feel they've got what it takes or they look around and they see other people better equipped. We all do that a little bit. Um, but just saying, you know, the eagerness that is planted in you, that's that's the beginning. That is the blessing. And um, I think that's really liberating, actually. Yeah, Quite generous, is. of course. <laughs> it, it, it is. 
I like the way he says early on, I don't I don't say this as a command, <laughs> but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. I, I, I just wonder sometimes how often we are uh, we are tested in our love for Christ. Mm. Yeah. You know, what what does, it, what does it mean to be tested? You know, we're not being put on trial or anything like that, but this idea that, you know, we're being asked to perhaps stop and to think and to really take account of what it means, you know, to, to follow in the love of Christ and to carry out particularly what Paul has been saying to Corinthians earlier and will go on saying, you know, this is this is this is what I've told you and this is the way you need to lead your life with, with for people. And and I think faith at times is a testing, isn't it? Yeah. I think if things don't go the way you'd hoped, or if your own circumstances become difficult, um some people can I think some people can think, oh, well, what was the point of all that? But I think most people, in fact, you know, they don't they don't do that. They 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 flounder a little bit and then they know that God's love is is very real and it can become even more real for people in difficult times. And um, and and we can encourage one another. I mean, I've. You know, we've all known lots of people through our years in ministry, um, people we've hoped to serve who've been going through really difficult things. And yet something in them burns really bright. And uh, it's a big encouragement to everybody. But I've always found it a big encouragement because I think, gosh, if if they're still full of God's love and they're doing all these things uh, and they're a blessing to people, you know, why am I finding it difficult? I think that's why we need to be Christians together. I think we need to be encouraged by one another. And when one finds it difficult to, you know, to keep them going along with us, um, we are uh, a community of faith, aren't we? That's yeah. what the body of Christ is. And I guess he's uh, Paul is encouraging the Corinthians uh, who are sort of up and down and all over the place sometimes. Um, because, you know, it's not just about our individual um, worries. It's about where we're going together and uh, being encouraged and eager. So, I think there's um, almost... a. a an infectiousness part of what he's writing here mm. you know because they're keen it makes other people keen because they've learned a lot it makes other people want to do it and i think that's almost our task as a church today isn't it it's mm. i mean i've probably said it before i don't know whether i've said it on rev chat but i'll say it again and i'll probably say it again next month is the um the, one of the strap lines of the church i grew up in was to become an infectiously holy people. That you know, the keenness, the eagerness, the depth of the love is so deep that other people want to join in, and other people want to be like that. And I think Paul's got it right on the nail there. Really, you know, when and when he talks about becoming poor and rich, there's nothing to do with money. That's to do with our spiritual lives. You know, he wants us to be spiritually rich because we've got a deep relationship with Jesus. And that richness gives everything for other people. Yeah. And that's what he was highlighting, isn't it, in that um, second? Because the, the passage you just read is almost like two separate um, stories. He, when he talks about the eagerness of, for Titus, yes. you know, to, 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 to join him, you know, it's, it, it's that, it's that recognising in somebody um, as you just said, this infectiousness for the love of God in their lives. And obviously Titus has done something to bring himself to Paul's attention um, to become part of this, you know, leadership team, for want of a better word we would call today, mm -hmm. uh, setting forth out on, 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 on new journeys and trying to bring the faith to other places as well. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's a bit like you, you two. I would, uh, I would, uh, my I, partner. I, I, yeah, my dear. Uh, we're very great, very grateful for Chris. Yeah. And, and what, what he does to help us. No, it's, it's, it is, it is, it is lovely, uh, lo lovely prose, and it, it's that it does, it does keep you thinking, keeps you on your toes, doesn't it? As you say, Chris, I like, I like that, I like that part of that strap line to become infectious, holy people, or whatever it was. This, you know, really, re 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 really knowing that God is part of of all that we do, and it's only because of God's love for us that we can continue in the strength that we have, doing all that we do. That almost sounds like a time to be succinct, dear Bishop. <laughs> yes, it could it be. Yeah. yeah. And this isn't because you've got another golf match to go to or something, you think, Chris? We're just checking. You know, is that the... No, 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 no. I'm golfed out for a bit now, I expect. Good, good. good. Got good. work to do now. Yeah, good. Too many funerals coming in. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and, uh, and, and that's part of the co-working together, you see. Uh, you, because Chris has just very kindly offered to help us out in the Beminster team by doing a funeral that I've just found difficult to uh, to cover, and that's partnership, partnership for the gospel, working together, working together, lay ordained, even bishops. So there we are. Well, we will be back. God will. willing. God willing. Oh, now next week when we come back, it will be election day. Oh no! Don't we have to be totally impartial and not mention anything about that? Yeah, we day? do. We do. So Although we, we 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 do we do have some precedents in the Bible of selecting people. Wouldn't it be better if we? So after all this nonsense of having people turn up to put a, a bit of pencil mark on on a piece of paper, we just got all the candidates together and some straws and got them to pick one. Oh, I thought you were talking about something very political then about rigged elections. Well, no, I'm and just saying and that... And betting you know, on them. No, well, yes, it could be. But surely if it was good enough for choosing the new disciple, it's got to be good enough for choosing an MP. No wow. comment. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Who got the short straw or the long straw? I don't know. I would never question you which one was the winner, the short one or the long one. Yeah, well. Well, usually you've got a bunch of straws and you cut one slightly shorter. Oh, there you are. Thank you, Chris. So it's the short obviously, straw. Obviously, you, your, your time at that well-known theological college wasn't wasted. You obviously learned that. I'm not quite sure that came from there, but... <laughs> <laughs> there we are. There we are. Dear viewer, thank you very much. We will see you again next week. Don't forget to vote. An early warning. Just in case you're watching next week's on a Friday, and you'll miss the chance. Yes, so this week is our saying: don't forget to vote, whoever you want to vote for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. very important. Particular, particularly if you're a, of the female gender, because think what everybody went through. I told my daughter the other day that think what Mrs. Pankhurst went through. She'd be proud of you if you voted. Yeah, quite right too. Quite Good. Right. That's enough. I look political, whatever. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.